the next LeBron James, O.J. Mayo. He has been considered a phenom since he was nine years old. When he was in the sixth grade, he was said to be six feet tall, wearing a size 12 shoe. He could go to whatever school he wanted to go to play in college, uh, and he chose USC. How is he different from LeBron James? He's very different. He has a cloudy past. You either you love him and you think he's the next greatest thing, or you hate him. You think everything about his life is contrived, overdone, overhyped, overrated. You said he's cloudy. What's cloudy about him? It's just one thing after another. Yeah, Fights in high school, scrapes with the referees. Yeah. You know, even at USC, he's been there for less than a semester, and there are rumors that he broke a, kid, a teammate's jaw. The fact is, though, two years from now, nobody's going to care if the guy's sitting at the end of a bench in the NBA and he's no good. Is this guy as good a prospect as LeBron James? Yes. Really? They're saying as of today, yes, he would be the number one. In college basketball this season, one thing is certain. USC guard O.J. Mayo is considered the cream of the crop of this year's freshman class. What's uncertain is whether Mayo can survive his own success. He's either going to be a train wreck or he's going to be a limo ride. I mean, he's going to be one or the other. I mean, he's calculating. He's really smart. I mean, he's kind of like a crocodile. You see the eyes above the water, and that's all you see. You don't even know what's going on underneath. Before you go after this kid, call the adults that have been in his life. Before you just go paint him with a brush when you don't know who he is. Do you know you're different? And how? Than other 20-year-old basketball players. You say so. Since his days of playing in middle school, Mayo has been in the spotlight. I remember when he was in the sixth grade here before he actually started playing high school, and they would get in game situations, and you could just see him telling the older kids, we're not going to lose this game. Everyone wanted to play against OJ. They wanted to beat him. It's like the gunfight of the OK Corral. Give me your quickest gun, I'm going to go beat him. Well, OJ was the quickest gun, and everybody wanted to go after him. Number 32, OJ Mayo. He wanted to play in the NBA. You know, at eight years old, I said, well, that's fine. You know, you need to have a plan B, uh, just in case that doesn't pan out. And he looked at me, and he told me, he says, I don't need a plan B. But to escape the streets of Huntington, West Virginia, O.J. sought a father figure because his was incarcerated. He found one in AAU coach Dwayne Barnes. When Mayo was 12, Barnes encouraged him to attend Rose Hill Christian Academy in Ashland, Kentucky, 16 miles from his home, across the state line. Because in Kentucky, seventh graders who attend private schools can play high school basketball. He takes it down the lane, stuffs it. The O.J. Mayo Show was on. When we had a home game and had the opportunity to lease Boyd County Middle School because they, they could seat 5,500 people, we would move our games to there and would sell it out. Lines of kids, 50, 100 people more, want an autograph from him. In 2003, after Mayo played just two seasons of varsity ball with Rose Hill, Barnes became O.J.'s legal guardian. Barnes's next move was to take O.J. to a bigger city with more competition. Then, 15 years old, Mayo moved with Barnes to a suburb of Cincinnati, Ohio, where he enrolled as a high school freshman at North College Hill. Well, I just remember walking to the school and everybody was staring. <laughs> I guess everyone was staring. A lot of people was like looking through the glass windows. I didn't know what to think. At North College Hill, Mayo's talent delivered two state titles, while his popularity brought in nearly a quarter of a million dollars over three seasons through appearance fees and ticket sales. In the classroom, Mayo scored a 29 on his ACT exam, ranking him in the 95th percentile. But off the court, he got into trouble. Three different times during his junior year, he was suspended from school for fighting and skipping class. And as Barnes spent more time with his own family in Huntington, Mayo began to distance himself from his mentor. Barnes did not return E60's phone calls requesting an interview. You just don't want to really seem feel like a puppet and just do what people want you to do. I got a time in my life where I was like, 
I'm starting to not like basketball. It's, you know, it's getting too business-like, and I'm not even making any money. He was tired of the hoopla. The media would pick his game apart. Parents would pick his game apart. I told him, I said, you know, you get your stuff. We're going home. Mayo enrolled at his hometown Huntington High School for his senior season. His third state in five years brought another state championship and more trouble. First, there was an incident with an official in January of 2007. I mean, he didn't just fall. It was as if he got hit by, you know. A car or something, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess he just had his own agenda. And the ensuing contact led to a two-game suspension. Then, two months later, Mayo was riding in a car with friends when they were stopped. Police found marijuana, and though charges against Mayo were dropped, the damage was done. I told him years ago, um, choice not chance determines your destiny. You chose to get in that car. You didn't know what was in the car. You should have thought about that before you got in it. You have to choose what you do just because you are OJ. Being O.J. Mayo meant being introduced to the glitzy underworld of big-time youth basketball. His closest advisor today is a high school basketball promoter he met six years ago at a summer camp, a man named Rodney Guillory, whose links to two other student-athletes has led to their suspensions. Just getting involved with Rodney Guillory hurts you. Rodney Guillory has been called by the NCAA a uh, runner for agents. Now he's saying he's not anymore, and obviously the NCAA doesn't think he is anymore. If they thought he still was, O.J. Mayo would be ineligible right now. Guillory also declined to speak to E60. Mayo's mother still has strong doubts about Guillory's motives and relationship with her son. Why are you there? When you met him, he was pretty much self-made. I wanted to know what your angle was, what your angle will be at the end of the day. We don't know you, we don't trust you. Point blank. Why, why, why would she need to trust him for? Because you're her son. Yeah, she, just, she trusts me. <laughs> she doesn't trust so she him. trusts you to, to put the right people around you. Mm -hmm. So who do you trust? My family and family. Teammates? Yeah, that's my family. Uh, coach? Family. Still, it was Guillory who laid the foundation for Mayo to attend USC. The Trojans were not even pursuing O.J., a top five recruit. But that didn't deter Mayo's desire to transform the traditional football factory into a basketball power. So he instructed Guillory to make an unannounced visit to USC head coach Tim Floyd in 2006. He walked in and started telling us this story about uh, O.J. wanting to come and uh, wanted to find out who you were and if you'd have any interest. I said, well, who wouldn't? He wanted to stand on his own two feet for once, make his own decisions. For years, you know, adults around, you know, myself included, we were making decisions for him. Now it's time he wanted to make his own decisions. And I can respect that. 2,300 miles from home, Mayo is driving USC's basketball reemergence, averaging 20 points a game. Riding his bike around campus, Mayo is Floyd's only freshman to enroll in a junior level English class. Still, negative news has dogged Mayo. Before the season, he broke the jaw of teammate Daniel Hackett during a players only pickup game. So you didn't break his jaw? No. Yes, well, I did, but I didn't punch him. <laughs> <laughs> not intentionally. Yeah, not intentionally. If I admit to, <laughs> yeah, you know about I it. did. From a young prodigy living under a microscope to a young man carrying the weight of great expectations, O.J. Mayo's life remains in some respects a mystery. As his future unfolds, the events of the past still linger and now define who he is as a person. He's not a thug. I hate it when they put his name with a thug. He's not. I didn't raise a thug. He's just a boy, he's a man who loves to play basketball. Do I wish I never made the mistakes and do I wish I could go in the past and change them? I do, but they've been made and the only thing I can do is learn from them and never make them again. To me, the, the OJ Mayo story is all about 
taking control of your life. I mean, this kid, did, his life did not belong to him for a number of and years. He, and that's what he says. At 20, he worries and thinks about things that, you know, I just don't think a 20-year-old sh should have to. And I don't, I think there are probably very few people who really know who this kid is because for whatever reason, his 20 years of life on this earth have taught him not to really show who he is to too many people. Still to come on E60, wild on the web. No rest for the weary. Fearless, <laughs> free falling, and facing death. Picture getting an animal at 85 miles an hour from a dirty river. 